My name is Eric Jarvis. I'm an associate professor at Duke University Medical Center. Uh, I'm also a Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about why I became a scientist and how I became a scientist. Uh, just to let you know, I, right now I run a laboratory that uh, runs, roughly has anywhere from 15 to 20 persons, depending on the semester. And we study brain pathways for vocal learning. But that's not how I began. Um, <clears throat> so I grew up in New York City, mostly in the Bronx and Queens. And I grew up in a family that came from uh, diverse economic backgrounds, from being relatively poor, middle class. And uh, we always were told, you know, to have a dream in life, to make your life better, to do something uh, important. But most of my family was into the performing arts, particularly on my mother's side. And so we were all dreaming to be, you know, famous artists, singers, and dancers, and so forth. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, to uh, do, do this with a passion. And so when uh, I was a youngster in elementary school and eventually going to high school, I auditioned for the High School of Performing Arts and uh, got to be a dance major there. Uh, and I then also uh, was at the Joffrey Ballet School in New York City and the Alvin Ailey Dance Company, and I was pushing along to be a serious dancer. And I would dance six hours a day. Uh, three hours at school, three hours at one of these dance schools. And in between would have academic classes like, uh, you know, math, biology, reading, writing, and so on. Some point towards the end of my high school years, I uh, started really thinking about, you know, is this the career I want to pursue? And I was doing okay, and for instance, uh, uh, in my senior year, towards uh, the end of that year, uh, I was asked to audition for uh, Alvin Ailey Dance School, I mean, uh, the, the company, and I was asking myself, what do I really want to do in life? And I started asking my, that question because my mother always said to me, it doesn't really matter what you do, what's most important is that what you do, you do it well. And she would then add, but I'd like you to do something that has a positive impact on society. And I thought, you know, what can I do that has a positive impact on society? And I felt I could do that better as a scientist than I could do that as a dancer. So, so in my senior dance concert, right at the end of the dance concert, I'm think, making this decision here, and I said, you know what? I'd like to go ahead and be a scientist. And I didn't have any scientific background training at all. I had biology classes, which I really liked. Uh, so I applied to different colleges, got into uh, Hunter College, and actually had to take remedial courses uh, because they said I wasn't prepared enough uh, to take the advanced academic classes. So I took a summer of remedial classes and uh, then really started intensively studying biology uh, and mathematics like I was uh, studying dance. And the reason why I was studying biology and math is because I felt I wasn't sure if I really liked biology better or, uh, let's say, uh, that is the understanding of how biological organisms work or the origins of the universe. Those are my two uh, major interests. So I decided to do both. And I thought math would actually help me think better. And so then, <clears throat> after my first year, I got into a, um, a program that helps underrepresented minorities get into uh, scientific research. And this was a great advantage that I discovered later offset a disadvantage that I had that I didn't realize many other people had. And then I really worked with a passion in the lab. I would sometimes spend a night in the lab, do experiments on the weekends, on the holidays, and people would call up, where is Eric? Where is Eric? Where can we find him? In the lab. That's where he was. And I fell in love with doing scientific research in the lab like I did as a dancer. And people often ask me, uh, well, how, how did you make that switch? Aren't those two different fields very different? And I discovered at that time, no, they're not. Both of them require a lot of discipline. Both of them require a lot of hard work. Both of them uh, require acceptance of failure. That is, you have to uh, do a choreographed dance over and over and over again until you get it right, just like an experiment. Sometimes if you submit a paper for a publication, it gets rejected. Sometimes you go for an edition, you get rejected. So you have to learn how to accept rejection and try over again. 
And importantly, both of them require a good level of creativity. As an artist, you need to be creative to uh, have your art uh, be appreciated by others. You need to come up with something new. Same thing for science. You need to be creative to understand uh, how nature works. And so, to me, dance and science was a natural merge of two different fields. Then, <clears throat> when I was at uh, 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 Hunter College, where I did my undergraduate uh, scientific research and also academic training, I decided, what do I want to do, particularly within science, for my future career? And I decided, you know what, I really am interested in two questions. One is the origins of the universe, and the other is how the brain works. And in trying to choose between those two, I chose uh, I, uh, to study how the brain works. Why? Because I felt it was more rooted in my dance background. That is more rooted in something here in the earth. And <clears throat> as a result of that, I applied to different graduate schools, and I got into a number of them because uh, from my, all the hard work I did as an undergraduate student, I was able to publish six papers in scientific journals, either as uh, you know, first author papers or collaborative papers with others in the lab. And that helped me become competitive to get into some good graduate school programs. And I was trying to decide, do I want to do an MD, PhD, or a PhD to answer this question about brain function? And I decided on the PhD because usually the PhDs are the uh, folks who actually make the discoveries to understand how things work or the cures for diseases. So I went to Rockefeller University as a graduate student, and I began to study uh, the songbird brain and discovered genes that are regulated in those areas that uh, either control the neural circuits for forming uh, learned vocalizations or at least uh, producing them. And to make a long story short, to skip a number of years later, uh, <clears throat> to now being an associate professor at Duke University Medical Center teaching medical students on how the brain works, um, I recently discovered in, with my collaborators that the brain pathways that control vocal learning abilities are embedded within brain areas that control motor sequence behavior, including the potentially learning how to dance. And so now I'm actually coming full circle to bringing my scientific career and my former dance training together because those two brain circuits seem to be related to each other. And I hope in the future to discover what that relationship really is. And I think the answer is going to tell us how brain pathways for complex circuits evolve in general. And this would be a natural, nice merging of art and science.